Listen to this. A Catholic school in Nashville, Tennessee, has pulled Harry Potter books off the shelves because of the risk of, quote, conjuring evil spirits. Yep. A school pastor sent an email about the decision saying that the curses and spells used in these books are real. And he said if they are read out loud, you could risk conjuring these evil spirits. A reminder, the author, J.K. Rowling, wrote the Harry Potter series and says it is fiction. The pastor says, though, he spoke with exorcists in Rome and here in the U.S. before he made his decision. We want to tell you about something that's happening specifically at the school in Tennessee. They just banned the Harry Potter books, claiming that after consulting with exorcists, <laughs> they determined that readers risk conjuring evil spirits because the spells in the book are real. Now, Harry Potter is a multi-billion dollar franchise that's been around since the 1990s. One would think this is kind of a late warning. <laughs> I mean, all the movies are out there, so you run that risk. I mean... Do you know the Roald Dahl book, The Witches? Yes. I actually had a nanny take that book away from me when I was like 11 right. because she thought the same thing. Yeah. And my mother got mad because it's obviously Roald Dahl is an incredible book for imagination. I feel the same way about the Harry Potter books. They've made children love reading again and it's a huge franchise. So you are a little late to the yeah. table. You know, yeah. and it's a Catholic Tennessee. school. The Catholic Church making it so hard for me on a regular basis. Well, this is just, this is one school. Oh, this is on. one guy who, now I just want to say this again, who consulted with his exorcist. Ex exorcist. Who, who also shared his concern. I think that's a real who thing, shared, Well, exorcism is a real thing, but yeah. you know, one knows that usually there's a protocol. You know, exorcists aren't just hanging Thank out. Thank God I haven't school. had any experience. You know, hey, what do you do? I'm an exorcist. I mean... Aren't they priests? Like, I don't know. Yeah, they're they usually priests. Yeah, It's kind of crazy. But I usually but, don't consult them to get, like, real life advice on... Yeah. Books not on I books. Read. And, you know, for those of you who think we're mocking, we're, we're having a bit of fun. But here's the thing. As we pointed out, the books have been out for a long time. There's a play. There's now, a play. A, there's all movies. kinds of stuff. And really, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but if something was going to go wrong, it would have happened with me first. <laughs> K. Rowling's Harry Potter series is the most popular children's book series ever written. Rowling's books and the subsequent movies based upon her books have helped initiate countless children into different forms of occult ideology. While Rowling acknowledges that sometimes it will take as much as a week to work something out in her stories, she admits that the initial story of Harry Potter and many of the other characters came in a stream of consciousness. Rowling admitted, quote, Harry as a character came fully formed, as did the idea of his sidekicks, the characters of Ron and Hermione, who is the brains of the threesome. She said, it started with Harry, then all three characters and situations came flooding into my head. Rowling describes the way that she writes as though she is often in a stream of consciousness and that at times she is only taking notes of things she sees and hears and what sound like visions. She states, quote, I see a situation and then I try to describe it as vividly as I can, end quote. I have a very visual imagination. I see it, then I try to describe what is in my mind's eye. For author J.K. Rowling, it all started on a train. It was 1990 and she was traveling from Manchester to London. Rowling describes her own writing ability in writing the Harry Potter series, much in the same way she describes the channeling of spirits that takes place in the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Is it possible that J.K. Rowling herself is being used by spirit entities to indoctrinate our children into witchcraft? Joanne Rowling not only describes her introduction to her main characters in such a way as describing what she sees, but Rowling states that when she writes the dialogue between characters, she simply takes notes from what she hears almost audibly. She states, quote, and I do love writing dialogue. Dialogue comes to me as though I'm just overhearing a conversation, end quote. Blavatsky is an obvious reference to H.P. Blavatsky, as Blavatsky is a perfect anagram for Blavatsky, who shares the same initials as Harry Potter. Her name is usually written as H.P. Blavatsky. Blavatsky's book, Unfogging the Future, is listed as a divination text at the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in the Harry Potter series, and recalls Isis Unveiled, which is Blavatsky's first major work. Blavatsky is, of course, along with Satanist Aleister Crowley, a Gnostic founder of the modern-day New Age movement, or Neo-Gnosticism. Blavatsky, in her secret doctrine, quotes occultist Eliphaz Levi approvingly, stating, quote, 
Satan is the angel who is proud enough to believe himself God, brave enough to buy his independence at the price of eternal suffering and torture, beautiful enough to have adored himself in full divine light, strong enough to reign in darkness amidst agony, and to have built himself a throne on his inextinguishable pyre. The prince of anarchy served by a hierarchy of pure spirits. We saw earlier how both Blavatsky and Crowley taught that Satan liberated humanity from the Creator as he initiated Eve in the Garden of Eden. Harry Potter's escape from the world of muggles, which are non-magical human beings, is precipitated by a communication that takes place between Harry Potter and a serpent. Harry Potter escapes from the material world of the muggles to the spiritual world of witchcraft and wizardry. After Harry Potter escapes the world of material illusions, he finds out that he actually has godlike powers. But it's interesting because J.K. Rowling also seems to be patterning the life of Harry Potter after the life of Satanist Aleister Crowley. Like Harry Potter, Crowley abandoned his strict upbringing claiming that his mother was a tyrannical religious bigot and went on to discover that he was a sorcerer joining several occult orders. Like Harry Potter, Crowley realized he was a wizard as a preteen. Crowley stated, quote, Before I touched my teens, I was already aware that I was the beast, whose number is 666. While Crowley would claim to have committed several human sacrifices, he claimed that he killed his first cat at the age of 11. According to J.K. Rowling, Harry began to find out that he was a wizard at age 11. In Harry Potter, The Goblet of Fire, page 20, it is stated, quote, It had been enough of a shock for Harry to discover on his 11th birthday that he was a wizard. As in Crowley's Satanism, in the Harry Potter series, the number 11 takes on special significance. Crowley writes that, quote, 11 is a number of magic in itself. He also writes that 11, quote, is a sacred number par excellence of the new age or new eon. It is written in the book of the law, 11, as all their numbers who are of us. Crowley claimed that the number 11 was his magic number. Crowley began to spell magic with the letter K at the end of magic because the letter K is the 11th letter of the alphabet and had a special Kabbalistic meaning to Crowley as a Satanist. Not only does Harry realize that he has occult powers at the age of 11, but the length of Harry's wand seems to have special significance as is perfectly suited for Harry Potter. In Harry Potter, the Goblet of Fire, page 310, we read, quote, Harry had weighed what felt like every wand in the shop. At last, he had found one that suited him. This one, which was made of holly, 11 inches long. Both Crowley and Harry did not only get their starts as sorcerers at the same age and under similar circumstances, but they both had distinguishing marks as children that revealed that they were sorcerers. For Harry Potter, this distinguishing mark, of course, was a lightning bolt. Crowley states in his confessions, at birth, I had three distinguishing marks. He states that, quote, over the center of my heart, I had four hairs curling from left to right in the exact form of a swastika. Before Hitler was, I am. Harry has a distinguishing mark on his forehead as well, which is an ancient occult symbol, a Nazi stylized lightning bolt. In an interview with Scholastic, when J.K. Rowling was asked, quote, Why did you choose the lightning bolt as a trademark for Harry Potter? Rowling stated, quote, Just because I decided that it would be an interesting and distinctive mark. End quote. It is interesting that Harry Potter's lightning bolt and Crowley's swastika both share a similar occult history. The lightning bolt has long been a symbol in the occult and Satanism. Crowley taught that the Satanist was to find his own magical path and that he was to follow the satanic maxim, do what thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law, to realize his true destiny as a magician.